or where if hey guys i'm back hi jennifer hello i almost got scared for a minute i was like it's 7 30 already <laughs> uh believe it or not it just it just converted moment to okay. moments so i things happen okay you're good i was working on homework so that's all good <laughs> oh good so i'm glad i wasn't boring you everybody doing okay good sir how are you today i'm doing fine uh how are your other teachers teach uh treating you okay pretty good so so what's the matter sophia uh, I just sent you an email asking about the Zoom, and then you you sent the the link right after I sent that, so I feel kind uh, of. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm omniscient. What can I tell you? Read my thoughts. There we go. <laughs> Isn't that a scary thought? I, I'd let you read mine, but there's absolutely nothing in here. Um, that's that's sounds preferable compared uh, to me. Believe me. Believe me, I'm hoping. I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping I get more than 10 people here because this is not an easy, uh, it's not an easy lab, guys. I'll be flat out. Uh, people are coming in bits and pieces. Okay, I did have a pen. Gates, I saw you here, right? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Davila, Monica, Terry, I saw, Sophia's in here, Apple Grace, you hear yet, Apple Grace, Hunter, I saw, Landre, Leandre, Maverick, Tyler, I'm seeing where all my uh, uh, lost people are. Okay, Aya, Aya, Jeff. Here. Thank you, Grace. Grace. Oh, here, Grace. Yeah. Yes, Tyler. I saw you. Uh, Katie. Mateo, I saw. Faith, I think I saw. Yes, I do. Uh, Jennifer, I saw. Victoria, I saw. Michael. Michael. Philip. Philip, I saw. Miriam. Miriam. Here. And that should be it. Going through again, guys. Davila is in now. Monica Cardenas. Cardenas? Oh, let's see. Apple Grace. Leandre. Maverick. Okay. Um, Aya, Aya here yet? And that should be about it, guys. Okay, this is, this is, I'm not kidding you, it's gonna be one of the hardest labs that you do this semester. And um, it's, I don't agree with it being put in the first position here. I think we should really go with the measurements uh, lab first and um, and then perhaps get this a couple couple uh, weeks down the road but uh, it is what it is we have to we have to deal with it and we will we'll get through it all right I'm going to show up a little PowerPoint guys little PowerPoint being like 36 slides this will be a much larger slideshow than I normally present to you, okay? What we are doing is we are trying to distinguish between 
physical properties and changes and chemical properties and changes. And hopefully I'll be able to say it, get it on a nice level so that we can get sort of our hands around this thing. So we're dealing with physical properties, chemical properties, physical changes and chemical changes. Now, when we're dealing with a physical property, we're dealing with a trait or a characteristic of that particular substance. It could be its odor. It could be the way its color looks. It could be the texture of it. It could be the way it's, did I say smell already? Uh, it could be a way if you take like tin, if you take tin and flap it, it kind of like has a noise to it. It's kind of typical of tin. Physical properties are what determine what a substance is because what we're using is the trait of the substance itself. So it makes kind of sense that we use physical properties to identify things since that's how we detect them. Does that kind of make sense to you all? Hey, Professor, I just have a quick question. Uh, uh, just kind of going forward to it. When we when I took the course, I said that boiling water was a physical property. That's yes. what confused me. I'm not, I wasn't sure why. Does the water change? Okay. Okay. Have you ever boiled water with the lid on the pan? Uh, yes. Thanks. Okay. Have you ever lifted that lid off? and yes. seeing the water that's on the top of the pan, right? Okay, how did it go from where it was in the liquid up to the lid? It got made into a gas and condensed on that lid, right? Okay, that makes sense. So, so it, it wouldn't be physical, it wouldn't be... Uh... It's not chemical, it is okay, a physical. Yeah. That is a physical change. It's going from water to a gas, back to a water. Um, I'm sorry, so what's the difference between physical property and physical change then? I thought that was kind of... Okay, it all has to do with action, okay? If it's happening, it's a change. If it's not happening, it's a property. Water can boil at 100 degrees. That is a property. Boiling water at 100 degrees is a change because you're taking it from the liquid state, putting it into the gaseous state. It's all a matter of English semantics, these four different things. And you got to be careful how you answer them. Sometimes you got to read into them a little bit. So physical properties are colors, odors, textures, things of that nature. A physical property, if you have paper, have a piece of paper. Sorry, I'm grabbing one. Isn't it kind of smooth? It has some toughness to it. It's not like, or it can have toughness. If you have tissue paper, that's a different property than regular paper but they all have the ability to tear apart. That is a physical property. All of them have the ability to fold, fold. All of them have the ability to get crumpled. They all have the ability, if I take a pen and write on it, that now says I can write on paper. That is, is a property. By writing on the paper, I've actually done a change. A physical change involves weighing, uh, observing how the substance is observed by changing it. That was a whole bunch of mumble that I just shoved into my mouth. Okay, you change the way a substance is deserved by, without changing the substance. In other words, paper can look like this, right? You can crop it up. It looks different. This paper looks different from this one. They look different. 
I have changed them. It's still paper. Can I not burn both of them? Can I not burn them you both? Can. Yes. Um, can, can we see you burn those right now? Can you see what, Terry? For a can you burn lab? those for us right now? <laughs> can I... I am pyromaniac. Yes, I would like to do a visual perspective. That's this is a lab after all. I'm so sorry. You guys obviously need more sugar in your diet. <laughs> <laughs> a visual representation of physical change where, uh, and, you know, advance my understanding, Professor. I like my roll top desk too much. I spent too much <laughs> for it. <laughs> physical change. Gate, you're bringing up boiling yes. water. Changing something from one state to another involves a physical change. Having changing its regular appearance involves a physical change. In other words, if I take this piece of paper and I paint it, and I paint it with something, I've changed the physical property. I've changed, sorry, I have changed the physical nature of it, but it's still paper beneath there. I could take, make a very, very nice origami dragon with that pay, I can't. I have absolutely no talent in this regard. The only thing I can do is fold napkins into Christmas trees. But guys, we can make it. We can change the paper to another shape. Okay, yeah, Professor, I'm sorry to call you off. I, I, now I'm a bit confused because looking at the definition of physical property, it says odor, color, and texture. So painting a paper that's physical property. If I mean, you just... do it, do you have the ability to paint that? Right. Okay. The paper has its own properties. It can burn. Okay. You can write on paper. Uh, that's a physical property of paper. Uh, paper has a certain smell to it. Those are all physical properties. By actually doing the painting, that is causing a physical change to my paper. Got you. Okay, got it. Okay, now it makes sense. Okay. okay. All right. Basically, when we're dealing with chemistry, though, we're talking about two basic areas. Changing the state of the matter, making it go from a solid to a liquid to a gas. And the other way you can, you can do a physical change in chemistry is by dissolving it. You have not changed. You have not changed water when you boil it and make it into steam. If you went out and grabbed one of those steam molecules and took it apart and analyzed it, you would still find it had one oxygen and two hydrogens attached to it. Grabbed it from the wa boiling water, same thing. You would find one oxygen, two hydrogens. You haven't changed the substance. The substance still retains its original properties. Does that make sense? That is what's involved in physical change. You haven't changed the substance at all. All you've done is change its original, it's, I'm sorry, all you've done is change its state. You have not changed its original properties. So, Professor, just a recap. So the idea of wanting to change something is considered a physical property, but the action of changing it is a physical change. Is that kind of what you're trying to say? If I changing how it looks would be the physical change, but changing its chemical composition, like burning it, um, adding another thing to it, that would change its chemical composition. It's a okay, chemical let me give you an example. I can take this stuff here, this paper, <laughs> I can soak it into nitric acid. I've now created nitrocellulose. You know that better as smokeless powder. Okay, Kate? By soaking it into the nitric acid, I have changed the paper into something else called nitrocellulose. Now, the nitrocellulose has different properties from paper. If I take the paper, I can burn it, but nitrocellulose will explode. 
Does that make sense to you, Kate? Yes. All right. When we're dealing with chemical properties, chemical properties have the idea they can change into something else. The key is it hasn't happened yet. Paper can be made into nitrocellulose. It has the ability to react with nitric acid. That's a chemical property of paper. It hasn't happened yet until I sit and soak that in the tub of nitric acid. Once I soak it in the tub of nitric acid, then it's undergoing change. Does that kind of make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Th thanks somebody for the mm hmm All right, let's look at a copper kettle. Has anybody, does anybody know what the Statue of Liberty is made out of? Copper. Copper. Okay, what color is copper? Brown. 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 Bronze. Okay, bronze, brown, something like that. But yet, guys, the Statue of Liberty is what color? Green. So, does oh. this copper, does this copper that you see in the left kettle, does that have the ability to get all of this blue gunk around it? Yes. Yes. The patina. So that is a property. Copper has the ability to react with the oxygen in the air to make copper oxide, which is green. And a change. What happens is the original substance gets converted into something new. Now, the second statement, not a lot of people are gonna tell you about it, but if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. If you have a new substance, more than likely you have different physical properties because the substances are different. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So what we're doing in these experiments is we're putting two things together. We're noticing what the properties were before we put them together, and we're noticing them afterwards. If the physical properties change from the beforehand to the after, then more than likely, we got a chemical change, guys. That's all we're dealing with here. Statues, one of the big problems. Has anybody ever been to uh, uh, Florence? No. Nobody, nobody in here has ever been to Florence? They yeah. may, I'm sorry? Florence was in, in the height of the re Renaissance. What they did was they had this big plaza in the middle of Florence, where the head of the government is, the government of Florence. And they have all these porticles. In other words, there, there are these like walkways. Underneath all of these walkways, they used to have the statues that were carved in the Renaissance. Uh, the rape of the... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the statue. David, I'm sorry, the rape of the Sabines? The Sabine women? Yeah, this, thank you, thank you. The rape of the Sabine women. Uh, famous statue, the David, Michelangelo's famous David. Now, they have statues there now, but they're just concrete uh, facsimiles of them. The real statues are hidden away in humid rooms because acid rain is really eating away at these statues because acid is an acid and the statues are made out of granite and marble, which are basic in nature. Acid attacks the basic marble and that causes all the pitting you see here. In any case, it is an example of a chemical change. Steel rusting. You got to look at the things beforehand. 
Steel before it begins to rust is shiny, silvery, dense. Rust, on the other hand, is brownish, it's dull and flaky. If you happen to mistakenly put bleach on your blue jeans, before the bleach, you had the color of the jeans or the stain. After the bleach, the bleach acts on that chemically. The color dissipates. Now the jeans have white marks where the stain was applied. Chemical changes, different properties than they had before. All right. If you have, and you should have printed out a copy of your lab manuals, on page three, you are going to have a listing of the specific changes he wants you to look for during the experiments. And what is happening is you are going to go onto the site of the, uh, onto the computer site, the course site, and you are going to go to this experiment. Within this experiment, there are a series of nine or 10 videos. You got to watch them. You got to pay attention to what he's telling you about what's happening because you can't smell things from where you are. On page three of your manual, there are the from A to O different types of different types of changes that you can note. Okay. So this is where that, this is a key for you. These are the changes that he's going to ask you about in the quiz. Then if you look, if you flag back to page nine, there is a data table that will help you record your results. It lists A through O, all of those changes that were on page three. Then it also lists the 10 experiments on the other chart. So you have like a chart, a data table. I believe the observations are on the horizontal axis. The experiments are on the vertical one. And basically you just check off the boxes to see when you see a particular change that has happened in an experiment. But to help you out for one thing and for a second reason, for one, some ungodly reason, he has given you chemical reactions in this experiment. You haven't had chemical reactions yet. So you have no idea what you're, to, what you're to expect. I'm gonna help you try and lead you through that. All right. The first experiment you're going to do is you're gonna put steel wool. What is steel wool mainly composed of? What element? Iron. Iron. You're putting iron in a solution of copper sulfate. So right now, I want you to flip to page nine, last page of the experiment. And you got to tell me, iron and a copper compound. Find which reaction pertains to that. Somebody do it quickly, because I'm hungry. I want to eat. I have soup waiting for me. Homemade beef soup. I'm currently eating a salmon with rice. <laughs> God bless you. I had soup earlier. Thank you. <laughs> All right, look at those equations. Which one is it? Which reaction has Fe and a copper compound with it? Come on, Sophia. Which one is it? Which one down the road? Come on. I think it's the fourth one. Anybody, does anybody disagree with her? No. no. Is that it? Uh, that's what I see. That's yeah. what you see? Yes, sir. All right. Must be right if Sophie says so. I don't even know what you're asking, sir. It's, okay, it's the chemical equation, Sophia. 
Okay. You see, do you have page nine open? No, sir, I don't have a printer. Okay, you don't no. have a printer. You're gonna, you're gonna have to make out somehow, Sophia. Uh, but do you see it on the screen? Yeah. You are you able to split screen? Uh, yeah. Call up the manual because you're gonna need it for the rest of this period. Justin, do you see? Do you see when I said you have copper, you have iron and a copper compound that this is probably the reaction you're dealing with, right? Justin? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Jeffrey. Je I'm sorry, Jeffrey, I sorry, apologize. It, no, it's okay, it's, it's my fault. All right, you're on somebody else's. Yeah, for some reason he keeps logging in under my brother's. Okay, sorry, Jeffrey. Okay, so we have, let's look at this equation, okay? What's iron look like, Jeff? Um, I, I don't have my manual either. No, um, what's I, iron? What's iron look like? <laughs> um, iron. I mean, it's a metal. What's it look like? Steel. Steel. What's, yeah. Tell, describe it to me. Like, like silver, hard. Silvery um, hard. Silvery hard. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy that. Okay. All right. Now look, anytime you have an arrow, that means you have a reaction, okay? That's what it's saying. So it's saying, if I have a reaction, I'm changing iron into copper. Jeff, what does copper look like? Uh, probably another metal. Probably silver and hard as well. No, I'm sure. Jeff, Jeff, have you no. ever stripped the wire? Oh, oh it's bronze, whoops, sorry. Bronze. Okay, so Jeff, if this reaction goes, I got iron, which is a steel color, making copper, which is a brown color. What are you expecting to see in the test tube? Bronze. You're, expect, you're expecting yeah. to see the silver go away and the bronze color come up, right? Does that make sense, Jeff? Yes. Terry. Terry, have you seen the videos yet? No, sir. If you look, when you look at the videos, what he's going to show you is he's going to show you the iron being looking like steel wool. And he's going to show you a blue solution. Okay? All I'm right. telling you right now, the SO4 portion of this has nothing to do with the color. Okay? The color has everything to do, that blue color has everything to do with the copper. Okay, Terry, are you working right. with me? Yes, sir. All right, now, I've got this blue solution, but I put iron in it. And Jeff just said, okay, my iron when is going away and I'm making copper. Terry, where am I making the copper from? Uh, from the reaction of the iron and the uh... isn't it coming? Look, look where I'm. Do you see when I'm? What's the second compound? Uh, magnesium. No, this this reaction. No. This reaction that you're seeing on the screen, Terry. Yeah. You have iron, and what else do you have? Um, I don't know what what the CU is. Copper. Okay. Oh. Okay. You are gonna have to you are gonna have to memorize these. They are gonna come back over and over again. CU is copper, SO4 is sulfate. All right. And I just told you the SO4 doesn't make the color. So the CU is what makes the blue color. You got that, Terry? Yes, I do. Professor. One second. Let me get through this and I will I'll be happy to work with you, okay? Okay. All right, so Terry, the blue color in that solution is made from copper. But Jeff just said, I'm using up the iron and I'm making copper metal. Right. So what's happening to the copper that's in solution? Is it's, it in? It's uh, increasing. Is it increasing or am I taking copper away from this to make the copper here. 
Um, you're taking copper away. I'm taking copper away from this, right, Terry? Right. So if I'm taking copper away from this, do you expect the blue color to get more intense or do you expect it to fade? Fade. I'm taking, I'm taking copper away from the copper sulfate. So that means the blue color should fade. Are you understanding how you're supposed to be working these things, guys? Yes. Somebody, yes, had, a, somebody had a question for me. No, it's okay. I think you answered it because I, I, I was trying to organize because what I did is when I watched them, I, I try to take notes on each individual video. And then um, I wrote that it went from clear blue to green. <laughs> it's honestly, Monica, part, Monica, he, he did the thing straight through, right? I think so. And the problem is it takes a long time for the color to go away. When I oh, do okay. this, when I do this face to face, Monica, when I do it face to face, I usually tell the kids, this is the first reaction I want them to do. And I want them to hold on to the test tube for a half an hour. Then I'll come back and talk to you about it. And at the end of the half an hour, you can tell with the old, the, the solution that doesn't have the iron in it is a lot more intense than the solution that does have the iron in it. Okay. It's just, it's a partially a problem of the way we're dealing with this right now and the way he chose to, to uh, show that. Okay, got it. Okay. And then I, I was trying to remember if, if the liquid was blue in the beginning, right? It was, it is. Okay. okay. okay Good, cool. Monica, I got you. Okay. Magnesium in hydrochloric acid. What's the symbol for magnesium? MG. Thank you, Monica. Your voice has gotten a lot deeper. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, for sorry. For, for, anybody. for copper, FYI, I did, I, I thought cup, like C-U-P, even though it's only C-U, but it's, I thought C-U for cup. Symbol, per. Symbols only. <laughs> Monica, here's a clue. That was my way of memorizing it. <laughs> here's a clue. Uh -huh. Symbols only have two letters. Right, I know that, but letters. I'm just saying, I know it's only two letters, but it made okay. me think of C-U cup for copper, whatever. I'm stupid, but okay, I, I sorry, go on. Lab. So look, looking at this uh, lab professor, is this who's, lab? Who, sorry, who's, who's speaking? Well, it's Gate. Yes, Gate. So is this lab that we're going to be watching some videos? This is due like today. I'm just lost because I no, didn't know. It's due next week, Gate. Gate, what you had due today was the pre-lab for this lab. You should have done the pre-lab for this lab by midnight of last night. Next, <laughs> next midnight, next midnight you are going to have this report, the report for the Chem Changes Lab. That report is going to be due next Tuesday at midnight, along with the pre-lab for the measurement lab. OK, you got that, Gabe? Yes, and, and these all look like a form of a quiz, correct? They're all in the form of a quiz. Okay. Only some of them are going to require short, short answers. And you're going to have to type them in. And, you're, and when you need to show work, you got to show me all the work. Monica, getting back to you. Magnesium, what is the symbol for magnesium? MG. All right. Do you have your, do you have your sheet printed out? No, but there's a reason for it. Of course, I'm going to blame someone else. I promise you it's not under the requirements. If it would have been under required, I would have gotten it. But I will get it tomorrow or whatever. Okay, guys, soon. guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't make this clear last week. But it is required for you to bring a hard copy to each lab, okay? Because I'm giving you questions here. Okay, Monica. For, if we're Go using, ahead. if we have the PDF open up on our computer, can we just That's use fine. that instead of? That's, That's fine. fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, who's got the PDF open? I do. I do. All I right, do. who's I? I do. I do. I do. Wonderful. I do. All right, I want Miss I do. Miss I do. I want you to tell me. 
tell me which reaction magnesium with hydrochloric acid corresponds with. How many choices do you have on page nine? Miss I do. I only see, well, there's two options for it. Okay, there are two options, right? Absolutely. Think, yeah. You have either Mg plus O2 or Mg plus HCl. By the way, who is Miss I do anyway? Hi, I'm Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. So, Victoria, you have two choices. You have magnesium with O2 or magnesium with HCl. Using what you know right now, do you know which is the correct reaction? I'm going to say magnesium with, with HCl. Magnesium with HCl. O2 is with oxygen. So just by pr process elimination, you know that the second, the second reaction you're dealing with is going to be Mg plus HCl. And that full reaction is what you see on the top of this slide. Okay, now, what these funny looking symbols after the chemical formulas mean is that means the state of matter they're in. Okay, fair enough, Victoria? Yeah, so solid, liquid, Li and gas. Solid, liquid, okay, so let's look. This state is a solid and this one is an aqueous, right? Yes. What's this stuff? Gas. So what do you expect to see in a chemical reaction if you didn't have gas before, but now you do? Uh, it's gonna, there's probably gonna be heat and it's gonna burn. So the gas will be released possibly. How are you gonna see the bubble? How are you gonna see that gas has been formed? And I just gave the answer away. <laughs> there's How gonna be you... gas. <laughs> What's gas? You, bubbles, you have the, bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles. Bubbles, 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 good, bubbles. So gas. I didn't know how else to say it. I was like, there's just, there's now gas. There's, you see it. You see bubbles, right? You see bubbles, sure. So if you mix magnesium with hydrochloric acid, aren't you going to expect to see bubbles? Yes. Because you're creating a gas. Okay. Now. If we look at magnesium and we look at HCl, well, the magnesium is a metal, it's bright and shiny, and HCl is a clear liquid, okay? AQ means it dissolves in water. So look at what this equation is telling me. It's telling me I'm going from a solid, what's happening over here? It's forming a it's liquid. It's dissolving. It's dissolving. It's not forming a liquid. It is dissolving. So what do you expect to, deserve, to, to observe? I have a solid mass. I've got a strip of magnesium. I put in HCl. What's going to happen to that strip of magnesium? You're going to look at it, and right in front of your eyes, something's going to happen. Dissolve. It's going to dissolve. The magnesium is going to disappear. Are there going to be bubbles? Yeah, with bubbles. Yes. <laughs> bubbles, too. So now you have two examples of how, why this is a chemical reaction. Didn't have bubbles before. Physical properties of these things, of the reactants. No bubbles. Physical property of the, of the products, you got bubbles. Okay? Physical property of magnesium before it's a solid. It's shiny, it's metallic like. Afterwards, that solid has gone away. Is this making sense, guys? Yes. yes. So bubbles are not a it's not a chemical change, it's a physical okay. change. No, Victoria. Or, well, not a physical change, but it's it's what am I trying to say here? Okay, let me ask this question. Physical property? Okay, one, is it a one, physical property? Being a gas, yes. State of matter. State of matter okay. is a physical property. Okay, and look what we've done here, Victoria. Where did the H2 come from? 
it came from HCl. So we have changed the substance. We've changed the substance from HCl into H2. Chemical okay. change. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Who's I? Terry. You know, I is a very, very popular name today. Yeah, it is. It is. Yes, Terry, uh -huh. what's your question? So it's lots of a question, more of a, I screwed up and I did the wrong pre-lab. I did the pre-lab for measurements. Um, Oops. It, am I just, am I just messed up now? You have two drops, Terry. I can't uh, do okay. it. I can't do anything. The answers are already out there. One of my drops is gone. One of your drops is gone. But look at it this way. You don't have to do the pre-lab for next week. That's cool. Got to look at the bright side. I have a weird question. Yeah, Hunter. Hunter. Um, have, uh, have chemists observed every single element in solid, liquid, and gas states? Or some of the elements? I doubt it. I doubt some it. The, some of the elements just can't. Um, they can't be reproduced in a lab, like in all states. Uh, Hunter, if you look at some of the, uh, they've got elements all the way filling out the bottom bottom line of the periodic table. Yeah. When you get far to the right there, those things are so fleeting that they don't yeah. exist for very long. So the answer to your question is, I'm sure no. But theoretically, do you think it's possible to get those? Uh, to yeah. get those? Yeah. This is going to give somebody a PhD and a Nobel Prize someday, Hunter. Thank yeah, you for predicting it. <laughs> Good, Hunter. Ma Hunter, you got magnesium heated in the air. Do you have those equations in front of you? I do not. Let me uh, flip the page real quick. I set it down. Hold on. Let me. What page was this again? I had nine. The... nine. I thought. Yeah, nine. It's the last one of the experiment. Magnesium. Um, Heated in the air. What do you think the equation is? Well, I'm on, for some reason I'm on nine and all it says is, uh, it's like a disclaimer for me to like sign it. I'm on page no, nine. No, not page nine of the experiment itself. Oh, sorry. Let me go to somebody else. Somebody else that has this answer. Magnesium heated in the air. I gave you the chance. We have two possibilities for the equation of magnesium heated in the air. We have two M equations with magnesium. Mg plus O2. Mg, Mg plus O2. Mg plus O2. So we're going to go there. Now, when this reaction happens, you get a bright light forming. An absolute brilliant light. Literally speaking, if you stare into that light, you'll go blind, seriously. It's as bright as a blowtorch that the people wear the masks to see what they're doing. So it, uh, there's a bright light. Now, you have to understand that light is energy. If you see light forming, then chemicals must have lost energy. The only way to do that is through reaction. So immediately upon seeing the light, you know that the original reactants have lost energy. Therefore, a reaction has occurred. Now, the other thing you need to notice, you're going to take this magnesium strip. You're going to take this magnesium strip and literally he's going to put it right into a Bunsen burner. It's going to heat for a second or two. Then this light's going to go off and he's going to pull the strip away. Now, magnesium has a bright steely finish. After this ends, you make magnesium oxide, which is a very, very fine powdery substance. Have we change the physical property of the magnesium. Yes. Yes. The physical, yeah. yeah. Chemical reaction or chemical change or physical change? It's a physical. It's, 
physical physical because it's still the same well no uh it's the same oh, elements it's 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 same element. wait wait time out but we started with magnesium now look what we have do we have a different substance so it's yes. a chemical change we have a different substance therefore guys it must be a chemical change all right, you have to understand the difference I'm making here. I am using the physical properties to discern whether a change happened. This starts out bright, shiny metal. Put it in the oxygen, heat it. I end up with light, fine, white powder. Does the light, white, fine powder have a different physical property than the shiny stuff yes yes the properties the physical properties have changed therefore we have probably gotten a chemical change if the physical properties change then we have a chemical change is that kind of sinking in a little bit yes yes okay now we're going to go to the water experiment in the water experiment, what they tell you to do is to fill a beaker up halfway, put a Bunsen burner off, and boil the snot out of it. Everybody's seen boiling water, correct? Yes. Is there yes. anybody here that has not seen boiling water? Great. I hope not. Can we get a, right. uh, a fine demonstration? <laughs> God help Is me. Is he going to go boil the water? How, how many more weeks do we have in this semester? <laughs> Too you many. got another 15 weeks with us, Professor. God bless you. All right. Assuming, assuming that everybody has seen water boil. All right. If you put a lid on that water, and then after a few minutes, if it lit on the boiling water, you take the lid off and you look at what's in the bottom of the lid. Does the water in the bottom of the lid look any different than the water that's boiling? No. no. Have I changed the water? No. No. So by taking the water, heating it to steam, and then recondensing it, have I chemically changed it? No. No. Have I physically changed it? Yes. Yes. I've taken it from a liquid to a gas, back to a liquid. We have a physical change here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. By the way, this is what that chemical reaction looks like. Should be H2OL going to H2O gas. They may have heat involved. Now we have the tricky one. The very, very tricky one. Potassium chromate in water. Okay. They give you, the, the procedure gives you the formula of potassium chromate as K2CrO4. Now, we have, again, two equations. We can take K2CrO4 plus water plus H2O rather, or we can take K2CrO4 plus PB parentheses NO3 taken twice. Which equation do you think this is? The first one. Thank God. Thank God for your support. All right. Now, what I want you to do for this one is look at the color of the potassium chromate crystals. If you look at them from the original video, they are going to be yellow. They are going to be yellow. And I need to mark something. Okay, what color is water normally? 
Clear. 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 All right. Now, if I put those yellow crystals in the water and shake them around, how many people have taken uh, Kool-Aid? How many people have taken Kool-Aid? What color is cherry Kool-Aid? What color is cherry Kool-Aid powder? Red. 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 Okay. We put that into water. What color is the water change? Red. Red. What's the color due to? Physical property. I mean, physical uh, change. Yeah, physical property. But what's it due to? Why is the water red now? The presence of the Kool Aid. The presence of the Kool Aid, right? The Kool Aid was what turned the water red. If I take all that water and evaporate it down from the Kool Aid, what do you think I'm going to be left with? Red, a red stain. A red stain or red sticky stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get the Kool-Aid back. Think of it this way. I'm taking yellow crystals, putting them in water. I get a yellow solution. Am I really changing the chemical? No. So I started with this. I'm ending with it. The only difference is it's dissolved in water. And I could easily get rid of the water by evaporating it away. So is this a chemical process, chemical change, or is this a physical change? Physical change. Physical. Physical change. Any, does anybody not see that? So are, is color like the, the tricky one, the tricky property between the it's two? Not the it's not okay, the only one. It's not the only one. I was staring that on the pre-lab and I'm like, well, it's not because color is, you would assume it would be more with a chemical change than a physical change. Because if you think about the Statue of Liberty, that's a chemical change versus this, which is more of a physical change. But Victoria, you got to think, what is the color due to? The color's due to the yellow crystals, right? Right. So right. the yellow crystals haven't changed. Right. All right. So if the yellow crystals haven't changed, the water hasn't changed either. There's no chemical change going on. It's only physical. Okay. Does that kind of make sense to you? No, no, it makes sense. It's just like I was looking at it and I'm like, I don't know if, you know, if color is the one property you that, gotta think. you know, can be in both. You got, it can be, it can be indicative of a physical change and or a chemical change. You got to be careful okay. and look at what you're dealing with. Okay. Same thing for heat. Uh, has anybody ever uh, bro uh, broken a bone or gotten a bad sprain and had them smack that pack and put that cold pack right on your arm? The whole yeah. reason, the whole reason that cold pack is cold is because they have ammonia chloride crystals in there. Endothermic, and right? It's endothermic. When the ammonia chloride crystals dissolve in water, it's an endothermic reaction, which means it absorbs heat, which means that it gets colder. All right? Have you ever put, uh, have you ever put salt on top of ice? And yeah. it, is that endothermic? Let me think. I, I got to, uh, Hunter, I got to work that out. I'll, I'll talk to you about after class about it, okay? Yeah, are, you, are you talking about the salt ice challenge back in the day? <laughs> no, like sometimes like if, because I work at a bar uh, like part time and if I really need like a beer to get cold, um, I'll throw in an ice bath. But if you put a little bit of salt in there, it'll like get colder faster. So, you know, I, it's probably endothermic, right? It's. Believe this or not, it's exothermic. Because I know that, the, you know, they put salt on roads to, like, get rid of ice. Right. It's, like, weird. No, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I, I, this, is, this is a tricky thing. It's one of those things that if I don't wrap my head around it, I get it wrong. Okay? Ice melting. You have to, it ha the ice has to absorb heat in order to melt. So it is indeed endothermic, okay? And I, I get the, Hunter, I'll get the ex explanation later. Everybody here doesn't need to know that. 
I'll tell you later what's going on with it, okay? It's all good. Thank you. Okay, we good with this one? Yes. Yeah. All right. We have the second reaction involving potassium chromate. The formula of lead nitrate is given. So that equation is going to be potassium chromate plus lead nitrate. Now, you're going to watch the video. Potassium chromate is going to be a yellow solution. Lead nitrate is going to be a clear solution. So these say aqueous. Aqueous means dissolves in water. When the reaction says solid, that means it no longer dissolves in water. Does that indicate a different physical property has been created? Yes. 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 Before they dissolved, now they don't. New physical property. New physical property. Are you guessing this is a chemical or a physical change? This physical. is a chemical change. Guys, I keep on hearing people yell out when I say there is a physical property change. Then they say it's a physical change. Understand this, in physical changes, the property doesn't change. I'm sorry, the substance doesn't change. So the property doesn't change. In a chemical change, the properties change because the substance has changed. So what you're doing is you're doing this backwards. You're sitting, you, what you're doing as an experimenter, you are taking two chemicals that dissolve in water, putting them together, and lo and behold, you're observing something that no longer dissolves in water. The fact that it no longer dissolves in water means that it has different physical properties than its predecessors did. If it has different physical properties than their predecessors, that means the properties have changed. If the properties have changed, you've got a chemical change. Talk to me. Talk to me about what you're not understanding about this. So um, from my understanding here is that when we have a chemical change that coincides with a physical change, the right answer is a chemical change because the chemical change no, no, causes physical change. Terry, Terry, listen to the words I'm saying, okay? You are having, you are, you are declaring that there is a chemical change because you have had a physical property change. Right. It's very semantic here. I am not saying there's a chemical change because there was a physical change. That is not what I'm not saying. What I am saying is there is a chemical change. I can say there's a chemical change because there was a physical property change. Does that make sense, Terry? Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's what I was saying. But uh, thank you. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to catch you because if you say something, it, it gets it's like a snowball. And I end up having to re-explain things about five or six times. I, I understand. Thank you, sir. OK. Our next reaction, sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid. And what they do with this. These are, we already figured out what HCl is. We now know what NaOH is, all right? What happens is into this solution, we also put something called an indicator. The particular indicator we're using is telling us if the solution is acidic, in that case, the solution looks clear, or if it's basic, it turns purple. So what we do is we take a little bit of HCl and add it to NaOH. And I'm uh, sorry, let me, let me back off that, I'm sorry. What we do is we take NaOH, which is a base, add a drop of our indicator, solution explodes in purple. 
Then we start adding the HCl. The HCl then gets added and eventually the purple color goes away. Did we have a chemical reaction? Yes. Yes, we did. We had a chemical reaction because first thing, we had a physical property. The base reacted with the indicator to make a purple color. We added HCl. We changed the color. We changed the physical property. Since we changed the physical property, we have a chemical change. Questions, ladies and gentlemen? We only got two more. Thank God, because I'm getting hungry. Yeah, me too. All right, number eight. I want to go home. Oh, we got three more. I'm sorry, three more. I just want to see yeah. an actual visual representation. <laughs> Look at the videos. <laughs> what can I tell you? All right, we have a procedure that tells us that ammonia chloride's formula is NH4Cl. What equation has this as a reactant? Is it the last one on the list? Does it look like that? Uh, on my lab, yeah, uh, NH4Cl. Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you, I haven't looked through all the videos, so I don't know how he actually does this one. But usually what you do when you do this experiment is you have the students put the ammonium chloride into the water and then fill the test tube. It's amazing how cold that test tube will get. All right, yes, it gets colder, but are we changing? Yes, energy has been changed. Remember, I told you color and energy are the tricky ones. What am I doing here? What am I physically doing to this ammonium chloride? Uh, you're dissolving it. Is, dis is dissolution a physical change or a chemical change? Physical. So I can take the NH4Cl that's in water, boil it away, and, and get my ammonium chloride crystals back. Yes. OK, number nine. We have vinegar and bicarbonate. The formula for bicarbonate was given. That big old honky thing is the equation for bicarbonate with vinegar. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever done the volcano experiment in elementary school, middle school, if you've ever done that, this is the equation we're dealing with. Now, I want you to look at this equation. This is what is supposed to happen. Look at all of the chemicals that I have listed here. Is there a dead giveaway that the reaction is occurring? Yes, sir. That is because where there were once two uh, chemicals or elements, there are now three. OK, but you're not observing that. Look at the chemicals I have here. There is a specific thing that is in here that you will be able to tell that a reaction happened right away. Who is, who's done the vinegar and bicarbonate experiment? Anybody? The volcano experiment. Nobody. Yeah, I have in like fourth grade. OK, Tyler, what did you see? Uh, release of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a? Gas. Okay, so with gas, you see what, Tyler? Bubbles. Guys, my reactants, clear liquid, solid. Neither one of them's a gas. I'm generating a gas. So when I'm looking at this, if I see bubbles, that means I have a gas. That means the physical properties 
have changed. That is a dead giveaway that I have a chemical reaction. All right. Second question here. You're supposed to go this one more step. You're supposed to let the reaction go to the very top of the tube and die down. Then you're supposed to put a lit stick in the air above the reaction. If you do that, it goes out. Why does it go out? Because the flame runs out of oxygen because of the concentration of CO2. What happens is the CO2 develops pressure and it pushes the oxygen completely out of the inside of the test tube. So when you put the fire in there, it has no oxygen, it dies. Another example of why this is a reaction. Last one. Last one is one that you guys don't normally do. It's the one that I carry, I come around with, with in the labs normally. Now, you have this Honkin compound. You take this powder, it's a white powder. You heat it up and it disappears. It goes away. Now, the evidence you have of a reaction. When you heat this up, stop. When you heat this up, you make ammonia gas, you make carbon dioxide gas, and you make liquid water. Of these things, ammonia is a very basic compound. Litmus reacts blue with bases. So you're taking, putting this compound in a test tube, Heating it up, it evaporates, it breaks the compound down to ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water. Then what you do is you wet a litmus paper and put it on top. It will turn that litmus blue. So that basically, in a nutshell, is are the 10 reactions. <sighs> Yes, you're right, Jeff. You're right. And you're right too, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer just yawned broadly. It's been a I'm long time. I am that boring, huh, Jennifer? No, it's been a long 5 a.m. to nowadays. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what time it is. Uh, guys, yeah, do, you, do you have 840. any questions? No, sir. No. Not presently, sir. Okay, this PowerPoint is loaded up in your, in your courses. It's the last module in the, uh, in the course content. And uh, it's, it's loaded in there as a PowerPoint. Hey, Professor. Yes. Okay, I know I've asked, I probably asked this question. I just want to clarify. So this nine page lab report, that's not, because the no, questions no, no, inside that not, lab. It is there. not a nine page lab report. You are answering all the questions online. The lab report is nine pages long. The report is not nine pages long. Is this Gaith? Is this Gaith? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. The lab report is not nine pages long. The experimental procedures and data tables are that long. Right. So my, my question is those videos that we're watching to answer the questions uh, in this document, is that something like we're graded or is it just as a quiz that we will be answering? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just trying to, is it like a different assignment or is this the same thing? Okay. Hmm. You have two assignments per experiment. Mm -hmm. The pre-lab is worth one point. You hand that in the mm -hmm. night before you do the experiment. The chemical and physical changes in properties lab, pre-lab, should have been handed in last night at midnight. Right, right, right. As a, it was like a quiz. It was a quiz. Right, right, okay. Now, next week, by next Tuesday, you have to turn in the report for the chem and physical properties and changes lab. It is going to consist almost 100%, if not 100%, it's gonna be real close to being 100% multiple choice questions. So this okay. one also will be like a quiz. 
next week. When you do that experiment, when we do that experiment, what's going to happen is that one is going to involve short answers. You're going to have to do operations in the text boxes. Got you. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from anybody else? Um, sorry. Sorry. sorry, Faith, I think had me first. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, sorry about it. So if we just watch all the videos that you linked in the, uh, the lab on my courses, we'll be able to answer these questions because I had a hard time trying to follow along. Uh, Faith, that's why I record them. That's why I record this meeting. And that's also why, basically it's gonna be fairly easy, okay? You're gonna have basically three questions for each, for each problem. One is gonna be the chemical, what's the chemical equation, okay? Second one is going to be, what did you observe? And I've kind of gone through some, at least some of the things that you're going to observe in the, uh, in the videos. You're gonna to have to watch the videos because there are some times when he's gonna say, oh, well, this has a strong odor or something like that. But you're gonna to have to take all those down and you're gonna to have to look at everything that's there, okay? And you're gonna to have to use that to put your observations as to what, you, what actually changed in this. If nothing changed, then nothing changes, okay? okay. Then the third question is going to be, is this a physical or chemical change? All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, be contentious about this one. It's the only one I'm going to really sit out and advertise you to be contentious. If you believe that you saw something that wasn't noted, bring it to my attention. And maybe you'll get extra points back on your, on your quiz, okay? If that's it, guys, I'm off. I'm about to eat some soup. You enjoy your friends, soup. Have a great evening, yes, sir. Thank have you. a great evening. Thank you. Oh, you too, sir. Thank you, Professor. Again, if you have questions, you. if you have questions, feel free to email me or to try and get me on the phone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. So long. Bye. Till for Thursday. Bye. Monica, you can go. Hunter. Oh, Hunter. Hunter. It's, it's okay. We don't have to go over it. No, no, no. No, it's all right. Basically, what happens is you have salt, okay? And what happens is when you get salt right onto ice, Salt wants to dissolve. If it has the chance, it's going to dissolve in the ice. And so what happens is the ice will absorb a little heat from the surroundings. And when it absorbs a little heat from the surroundings, it's capable of dissolving that salt. But by absorbing a little bit of heat, that makes it liquidy. Yep. Okay. Does that make sense to you? That, that makes sense. All right. I just wanted to sit and explain that to you before you end it tonight. It's all, it's all good. I might have more questions uh, about those, uh, those fast half-life elements. Those are pretty interesting. But uh, we'll, I'll save those for another day. You know, Andrew, those aren't interesting to me. Why you know, not? I'm sorry, Honor. Why not? Because I look at those as that's what gave somebody a Nobel Prize. All right? Well, it could give you a Nobel Prize. <laughs> but they're not useful. What can you use them for? Well, not, not useful yet, right? You know, that's true. You don't know that eventually we make it out to a molecule big enough yep. that eventually it's going to be stable. Right. And if, it, and if it's stable with that kind of mass... Yeah. It's, it's, it's just interesting because, you know, it, it's like they're like phantoms, you know, they can they pop up, they have their half life, where do they go? And then it's like, oh, they break down into other it's, it's radioactivity. They break down into, yeah, into other elements, right? Into other isotopes or other uh, yeah, isotopes. radioisotopes. 
It's very interesting that that process. I mean, I guess where it all comes from, like the fusion inside of the cores of stars, right? Like, ah, uh, yes. This, you, like everything besides what hydrogen and helium, for the most part. Uh, actually, even helium's made from hydrogen. Hydrogen's the oh, basic yeah. element. Everything else is made from it. That's that's it's really interesting. So, like everything, like the everything, like the farther away from hydrogen would be like those unstable elements, right? Yeah. That's a, that's interesting. Well, I appreciate you uh, talking to me about it. But uh, no. you go eat your soup, right? <laughs> okay. See you on Thursday. By the way, are you playing Pac-Man at the same time? No, there's a little there's a little link on this other thing. Okay, whatever. You take care. I'll Not see you on Thursday. Time. I'll see you on Thursday then, all right? All right, see you on Thursday, bud.